Hi, I'm Bob Birch, Web Technology Specialist with NDSU Agriculture Communication. I've had a lot of questions lately about what to do with Skype for Business recordings. So you've had a Skype for Business meeting or webinar, you've decided to record it so people can see it later. Now that you've done that, now what do you do with that so that people can access it easily and efficiently? So we're gonna give you a couple of options for doing that today, but first we're gonna start off with where the heck do I find this recording to begin with? And the easiest way to find that is through your Skype for Business client. So uh, if you open up Skype for Business client and you look for this menu at the top, you can click Tools and then choose Recording Manager. You may not have this top menu uh, active, so if you don't, you can access the same menu through this little uh, arrow next to the gear button, right? And if you click that arrow, it'll show the menu. You can choose tools and then recording manager, and that will open the Skype for Business recording manager. When you've been recording a Skype for Business session and you end that session, that uh, recording begins to process. And if you open the recording manager while that processing processing is going on, you'll see under the status, you can see that uh, recording processing. You can see most of mine here are marked completed, but there's a couple there that are marked unavailable. And the reason they're marked unavailable is because I shut down my computer while those recordings were still processing and that made those recordings fail. Now, I think there's been an update to the recording manager so that uh, the, rec the processing should continue the next time you start up your computer. But if you want to be safe and make sure that you don't lose your recordings, I would jump in here after you're done with your session that you've recorded. Check that status, make sure it says completed and it's completely finished processing before you shut down your computer. So here are your Skype for Business uh, recordings and there's a few things that you can note about this and do here that will help you uh, utilize them. One is, where are the recordings? Well, you can see the location of each recording right here. Most of my recordings are in the My Videos library under Link Recordings under that folder. That's the default location for Skype for Business recordings, um, but it might be different for you, so you might need to open this up and check. Um, if you don't wanna kinda hunt this down by opening up a bunch of windows and you just want to find where that recording is, you can click on any recording, click the Browse button, and it'll pop open the window where that recording lives. So pretty simple to find uh, your recording of your Skype for Business meeting or webinar. And one more thing I just want to point out real quickly is that you do have some options to publish these videos. You don't have to mess with the publish button at all. Um, these are recorded as MP4 files and they're all ready to go. But there are some options that you have if you do choose to publish. If you highlight a video and then choose publish, you can see that you can rename it, so it'll have a different name. Uh, you could save it somewhere else on your computer, so it's a different copy than the one that is in the original location. And then if you click the Options button here, you have some choices on what to include in the video. Now, most of this stuff you're probably going to want to include most times, but the one that uh, you know is probably most likely that you may not include if you choose not to is the instant message. That's the conversation uh, column or area in your Skype for Business recording. So if, if that's irrelevant to what you were sharing or if you feel like there's a conversations going on there that people might not want shared widely, um, then you might uncheck this instant message, click OK, click OK again to publish a different version of the of the video somewhere else and you, you might choose to share that that op other version. So we've got our, our recording, we know where it is, now what do we do with it to make it easily uh, viewable uh, and accessible? I recommend putting it on your NDSU Google Drive. Now, and you have access to the NDSU Google Drive, uh, which is an unlimited amount of space that you can use however you'd like. And you can access it through logging into your uh, Google Apps for Education account. It's really easy to do if you just go to google.com and click sign in or go to drive.google.com 
um, and, and sign in. Uh, once you put in your NDSU email address, it's going to take you to log in with your central authentication service username and password. I know that's a mouthful, but it's your NDSU specific username and password. Your username is the first part of your email address, everything before the at sign, and then your password is whatever your password is. If you're on campus, this is what you use to log into your computer or other computers in meeting rooms and classrooms across campus. If you're off campus, um, the you might use this for a number of reasons to access NDSU tools, including Qualtrics. So if you used Qualtrics, you've probably used your central authentication password. In fact, you have to have used that to log into Qualtrics. If you have any questions about it, about what it is or how to access it, you can, you can contact me or contact the NDSU help desk. But that's how you get access to your Google Apps for Education account, and that includes unlimited space on Google Drive. So if I was going to share a video here on Google Drive, what I would do is, is either just go ahead and upload it. I could do that by clicking New and then File Upload. Um, or I might create a folder like this test folder that I have here. And maybe I want to go into that folder and add a video. Again, I can click New and File Upload. Or I can just drag and drop it. So if I open up my window with videos in it here, Let's drag this out of the way a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. And then uh, choose a video. There we go. And just drag and drop that. And then that is going to uh, upload that video. Um, so there it is. There's my video now. What? Uh, how do I share it uh, with others? Um, what you want to do is to go ahead and get a shareable link. So you can highlight that video and click this link button right here to get shareable link. And you can see here as I turn that on, it says anyone with the link can view this video. That's actually the setting that I want. It's going to be make it the most accessible. Anyone I send this link to will be able to view it. Um, if I want to change that, I can click the sharing settings here and click right here where it says anyone with the link can view and see my other options, including limiting it to uh, anyone at North Dakota State with the link can view, any, um, anyone uh, with the link can edit, or, or other options as well. But we can leave it as anyone with the link uh, can view for, for my purposes here, and save that. And now copy that link, and whoever I send that to will be able to view that video and when I say view they don't have to download it first so let's take a look uh, at what that looks like so here's a video that I, I uploaded and the link to that video that I shared and as soon as I go to that link uh, I can go ahead and click play and start that video once you upload the video to Google Drive as soon as it's uploaded if you follow that shareable link that you've created um, you'll be able to download the video, but it does take a little bit of time for it to process so you can view it like we're seeing it right here. Um, I uploaded a two and a half minute video earlier today. It took about five minutes for it to process. So if you're uploading a big file, an hour long webinar or an hour long meeting, you know, it's probably gonna take a couple of hours before that video is processed and ready to view the way that we see it here. Uh, so you might wanna wait to send out your link until uh, you can test it and make sure that it's processed and people can view it this way. But like I said, even if you send it out right away, people who go there will have the option to download the video even if they can't view it. And there's the download button here. Now you might be thinking, okay, I'll put it on Google Drive. Why can't I put it on OneDrive? Well, you can. Um, but we've had mixed results here in terms of sharing that shareable link from OneDrive and having people actually be able to view it. And the mixed results really come from different kinds of browsers. So when you open that link in Chrome, uh, it wants to automatically download the video, which might be fine for people internally, especially if they're uh, on their computer, they can download it and view it. But if somebody mistakenly clicks on that link, it, out of the email that you sent them and they happen to be on their phone and not on Wi-Fi and all of a sudden uh, they are downloading an hour-long video over their data plan, they might not be very happy. So this gives people the option of actually viewing the video and then if they want to, they can download it as well.
Now, I said I would give you a couple of options for, um, for sharing videos, and the other option I want to mention is YouTube. Uh, why would you use YouTube instead of Google Drive? Well, the main reasons would be if you want to actually have a wider audience for this, you want people to be able to stumble upon it or search for it uh, and find it and not have to track down the link that you sent them uh, via email. Or if you want to take the recording and embed it into a web page. So maybe you want to create a web page on your website that talks about the uh, session that you've recorded and then go ahead and embed the video. Those would be reasons to, to uh, put the video on YouTube. If you don't already have a YouTube channel that you can use to upload those kinds of videos, uh, you do have a YouTube channel that's associated with your NDSU Google Apps for Education account. So here I am logged into my NDSU Google Apps for Education. I happen to be looking at Drive now, but if I wanted to get to my YouTube account, I can just go up here to the waffle menu uh, right up here in the top right, click on that. I'm gonna click more here and then click on YouTube. And this is a YouTube account associated with just my NDSU Google account. Not my personal Google account or anything like that, but my NDSU Google account. So if I want to upload my recording here, I just click the upload button and then I can drag and drop it like I, like I did before. Here's my little window and drag and drop that up here and that video begins to upload. I've got some information that I can fill out here if I'd like to, put a title in, a description, some tags, choose whether it's gonna be public or unlisted or private. Um, and then once I make all those changes and make those decisions, I can go ahead and publish that video. And then once it's finished processing, which it's really close now, here it is. I've got a link that I can share that goes directly to the video. I can click here and get the code to embed that into a web page. Um, I can send an email of it however I want to do it. So there it is, ready to go um, on my NDSU YouTube channel. So there's a couple of ways to share Skype for Business recordings. Again, if you have any questions at all, uh, feel free to contact me. I'd love to talk to you, help you out uh, in however I can, and uh, let us know. Uh, if this works for you, if you run into any problems at all. Thanks.